About it, where you can daily digitally come in and check in with me for thought and an update all from a biblical worldview and all in under three minutes it's thursday and our timer starts right now stop whining phil that's been my most repeated phrase lately my children are hearing it just about every day as they're struggling trying to understand what's going on but as much as they've been testing my patience i've been finding that i'm the one that needs to stop whining myself See, a couple nights ago, my wife participated in this parent Zoom meeting. Mothers in the community took some time to digitally connect and minister to each other, and they shared what the new normal for their family was looking like. Just about all of them described difficulty of now being a teacher at home with all the schools going to AMI. Many of them have to now juggle not just the full-time responsibilities of home now, but also all the stuff they were doing at work before. Many of their husbands are now working from home too, but they're more stressed than ever trying to figure out how to provide. And to make matters even harder, so many of them have precious children with special needs who have regressed developmentally and lost a lot of basic skills that we take for granted too often. One mother even asked for prayer as her daughter was about to get a much needed feeding tube surgery that they've been waiting for. And after I overheard those conversations from a distance, I got off my phone and I opened up my Bible because I knew that God needed to transform my heart from selfishness to thankfulness, to move me from whining to worship. One of Paul's very first letters, 1 Thessalonians, is a message of encouragement to a young church that he loved so much. On his second missionary journey, Paul was used in a mighty way by God in the city of Thessalonica, but there was immediate fierce persecution that broke out in the community that forced him out. And so he writes back to these believers, commending them for their strong faith, but challenging them to pursue true joy, what he describes as living in fellowship with Jesus and awaiting his second coming. In the closing chapter, chapter 5, verses 16 and 18, Paul says these words, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now you couldn't ask for a more clear message. Paul says rejoice, pray, and give thanks. And in case we missed it, he says, always, continually, and in all circumstances. It seems to me that this pandemic really shines the light and puts the focus on our hearts, or at least mine. We may convince others that we're following God's will, but unless we're showing thankfulness, we're really missing the first lesson. Washing your hands will help you stop the spread of the virus, but only thankfulness will get your heart ready for worship. So maybe this Thursday, you're in need of God to transform your heart as he did mine. I'll tell you the very first step. Stop whining and start counting your blessings. Think about it.